So we keep everything in spreadsheets, similarly to Excel. We have our five most commonly used spreadsheets, our facts, our all objects, our people, documents, and our issues. But we go so much deeper than that. You can keep track of your organizations, your documents, your physical evidence, uh, other discovery, your issues. Your questions, I like to use that one as a to-do list or a list of my depot questions. And then you can also link your research. So you can link all of that information to the specific spreadsheets. And then you can link the information on the spreadsheets to other things. For instance, here's my fact that's linked to this person, William Lang, linked to this organization, uh, Converse Chemical Labs, and it's also linked to this deposition. This fact is going to be used, or actually the next one will be used to prove my issue of wrongful termination. So it's linked to that issue. So we do all of that linking so that when you're looking for or specific information. For instance, I want to see all the facts that a specific person is involved in. You'll see we keep a counter. So Philip Hawkins here is involved in 24 facts. And I can click that ellipse right there and see all of those facts. So as opposed to a flat Excel spreadsheet or your legal pad, all of that information is linked to one another, the relationships are created, and then bringing up that information when you need it is very easy to do. In addition to organizing the data, you can also search the information. So we can link documents directly into case map. And when you bring those documents into case map, if they are not already searchable documents, Word documents, Excel, uh, or searchable PDFs, we will make them searchable as soon as you link them so that you can search not only all of the information on your spreadsheets, but also all of those linked documents. So if I do a search here for Hawkins, It'll tell me that Hawkins is found on 72 times on the spreadsheets, and we break that out for you. Seven people are linked to Mr. Hawkins, one organization, 31 documents, etc. But I can also see that there are five documents that contain Mr. Hawkins. And so I can click that, and when I click Review Linked File Hits, this is when it brings up our Doc Manager. The Doc Manager is another portion of Case Map that is our Document Viewer. And the Document Viewer does a lot of things for us uh, with Case Map. It allows you to see the document itself. You can also get hit highlighting, so you can go directly to that keyword in the as well as create annotations. When I create annotations, I can highlight information in the document itself, create a note. This is important. I can also create a new fact. So instead of manually typing in information on my fact spreadsheet, I can grab it directly from those documents and create my fact chronology. So I can create that new fact here. I can code all the information that's important to me. I can even say this is important too, and I type Mr. Hawkins' last name, and now that fact is linked to Mr. Hawkins. And I can also link it to any of my issues that I've created. When I click OK, now this has I've made an annotation, so it's highlighted. When I go back to my fact spreadsheet, I will have a reference to that fact. And there it is right there, linked to Mr. Hawkins, linked to that document, and there is my document. And when I go back to it, that highlighted portion is still highlighted. Right down here, I can zoom in to see that. So it shows me where my annotation is. And the last thing that happens is not only are the words on the documents searchable, but also that annotation that I made was searchable. So when I go back here to, to Case Map and I search for important, it'll tell me that I have one annotation note hit 
as well. So everything in case map is also searchable. And then lastly, to wrap up the basics of case map before we go into the new features of case map 12 is our reporting. We have multiple options for reporting in case map. You can do a single spreadsheet report called a quick report. So if I wanted a report that had all of my facts exactly how I see them here on my screen, I can move the fields around by dragging and dropping them in the order I want to see them. I can left click or right click and hide any fields I don't want to see in my report, or I can add fields. And then right up here at the top of the screen, I can print, print preview, or print a PDF. When I choose the print a PDF option, not, it will ask you where you want to save that fact chronology, and I'll just save that to my desktop. The PDF option is unique because given that all of uh, most, most of my facts here have these paper clips, that means that they have linked files or linked documents. The PDF report will allow me to embed copies of these documents, so in effect, taking my fact chronology in its entirety offline in PDF to show my client, to show my partner, to show co-counsel, however you would like to uh, or however you want to distribute that data. You can do that. So if I say yes, it gives me a list so that I can uh, remove any extremely large documents. Click OK. I open that up, and there's my report. I get this title page that gives me my logo that I put in, the name of my case, the type of report, and who ran the report. And then I'll go to the next page, and there's my fact chronology, exactly how it looked on my screen, and my linked files. And then our last type of report is the report book. And that's found right up here on my reports uh, ribbon. We can do by issue report, by object report. We can do a privilege log that will pull all of the documents that you've marked as uh, privilege. A summary judgment that will pull all of your disputed material facts so that you can uh, prepare your motion for summary judgment. And then our report books differ from our regular reports because they can pull data from multiple spreadsheets and the fields are predefined. So I can use these canned reports that we have built for you, or you can build your own. You can say, I really like that case summary, but I'd like to modify it a little bit so you can make a copy of it and then modify it. And it comes with a title page, a confidentiality statement that you click on and edit the content and put in your own information. So it's completely customizable and very, very easy to use. You can change which reports are included. So if you want everything except the research, you just uncheck those boxes and those will not be included. And then you get a report book. And this is what it will look like. So again, we get that title page, statement of confidentiality, a table of contents, an introduction that again is customizable by you, and then a title page before each spreadsheet. So there's our spreadsheet, our title page, etc. So that's the basic overview of case map. So now let's talk about case map 12 changes that we've made. Case map is such an easy product to use and has so much versatility and functionality that we found a need to add the ability to do light review in case map. For instances where you have a very robust review platform that might be hosted or uh, might be uh, in your environment, but uh, you would like something that's a little 
smaller, for your smaller cases, uh, anything around 50,000 documents or less. If you have a pro bono case that you don't want to incur the cost for that hosted solution, CaseMap may be that answer. And what we've added for that functionality is the ability to redact, to produce, and then the ability to do easy manual coding from those documents. So those are the three big options that we've added into CaseMap. And most of those happen through the Doc Manager. All right, so how this works. When I open up a document, either by clicking the paperclip on facts or if we go to the document spreadsheet and we open up our document in the Doc Manager, you'll see the Redact button here. When I click Redact, if I'm not near any text, then I'll get the option to create a box redaction. When I create that redaction, if I had highlighted text, that document text would show here, and then I have the option to create a redaction reason. These redaction reasons are pulled directly from the privilege field on our document spreadsheet. So this field right where to go, there it is, privilege. This information is here. If you want to add new privilege reasons, you can either type them here and hit enter, and it will ask if you want to insert that option into the list, or if you click on the field header and go to field properties, you click the plus here and you can add multiple values. So that's how we get those redaction reasons. When you get near text, you'll see that the icon changes, the cursor changes from that box to that line indicating that you are highlighting text. When I let go, you'll see there's the document text. And when I choose a redaction reason, I click OK. Now when I go back to I have to close Doc Manager. Now that privilege field will update with the redaction reason that you chose. So you don't have to redact your documents, then go back to the spreadsheet and put in your privilege reason. We do that for you. If you create multiple redactions on a single document, we will append this privilege field. So you'll see semicolon and the additional privilege reasons that you chose. So it won't overwrite. It will add those additional values into that field. So that when you run your privilege log, all of that information will be created for you. This also makes it easy for you to find your redactions because you can right click and filter by selection on that privilege reason and go right to any document that has been redacted with that privilege reason. Okay. We added this functionality because we found that what people were using in CaseMap when this was their quote unquote document review platform was Adobe. Adobe, when you create a redaction in the full version of Adobe, that re redaction is created and it is permanent immediately. But sometimes people put things in the wrong place or you find new information and so you need to make changes. So our redactions are um, flexible. So I can choose my select redaction option, choose that option, double click it. I can change the redaction reason. I can select it again and delete it. So you have options with your redactions. Okay. That's the first point. The second option in this new version of Case Map 12 is the document detail. And that's this button right here. So if I got documents to review, 
I import them into case map and I need to code some of that information but I don't want to go back and forth between looking at the document then go to the spreadsheet add in the field that's a cumbersome uh, workflow so what we added was the, the ability to code your information right here in the doc manager when you click that detail button it comes up on the right hand side and we also give you the option to dictate how you want to view this information. Built into case map, we have two views. The basic view that gives you those basic fields, the extended view that gives you all of the fields, and you'll see any field that has this slight coloring is read only. But we also give you the option to create your own custom views. So I click the new view button here, and I can create a custom view and I can decide what fields I want to be able to look into and code. So these are all in alphabetical order, so they're easy to find, and I'm just double-clicking to add them, and then there are my fields. When I make additions here, those fields on the spreadsheets back in case map will be populated with the information that I add. All right. Our third option in case map is the ability to produce. So I'm going to close Doc Manager here for a second because our document production is found right here on the reports ribbon in case map. The document production is based on the documents that you have open in the screen. So if I cancel this filter, it will produce everything. Or I can filter this way, and I can produce. So actually, I'm going to cancel that, and I'm going to produce everything. The document production walks you through a wizard. So there's, there's nothing you can skip or miss. It's step by step. Through this production process, you have the option to look at the documents that you've selected and manually remove any if you see any that do not need to be privileged or produced. You can omit any documents based on a, a specific privilege reason. You can create placeholders for those documents that you omit, and you can also apply bait stamps. So I'm going to select all documents, or if you had a filter that you have saved, you can also use any of your saved filters to select documents for production. Then it lists my documents that I'm going to produce, and if I don't want to produce this HTML document, I'll just remove that one and then the rest are ready to go. I click Next, and I select my bait stamp. I'm going to just name this ABC. It starts at 1. How many leading zeros or total numbers do you want to, dic to dictate how many leading zeros? So five leading zeros and my number 1. And when you change this, you'll be able to see here in the preview what it'll look like. You can change the font, the font size, bold, italic, and then where it will brand the document. It defaults to top right. I prefer bottom right, so you can change that. And then you can also shrink the documents so that if your documents are bleeding into the margins, you can shrink them up so that the branding does not brand on top of the document itself. If you had previous documents in a case map that you were using the doc previewer because you don't have doc manager to apply your bait stamps this will replace those bait stamps that were applied by doc previewers so just something to be aware of and then this is the order that they will be produced if you want them produced in a different order you just move them up or move them down in the order you want to produce them I click next and then I can choose any excluded documents, so any withheld documents. 
I'm going to choose Withheld Documents Privilege with No Redactions. And this will give me the option, actually, let's do this one. Nope. I gotta find one that has some information in it so I can show you the placeholder. There we go. When I have an option that has documents to be excluded, there we go, then I will get the option for placeholders. Placeholders are uh, single sheets that have specific information that will be printed on them. By default, it will give you the full base range of the document that's being omitted. But you can also put on there the document full name, the privilege type, or it will pull the description field here from your document spreadsheet. So whatever is in this description field, if you check this box, that's what will be imprinted along with that Bates range on your placeholder. You have three options for uh, document colors. You can do color grayscale or black and white. Uh, I believe this grayscale may be uh, excluded when we get to the final version of Case Map 12, but that's what that is uh, now. So I believe I was told from development, because it has not been released yet, this is still a beta version that I'm showing you. Uh, we will have color and, and, uh, and or black and white. Actually, not and or or. OK. And then you have three options for your output. OCR PDFs are searchable PDFs. Image-based PDFs are flat PDFs that are not searchable. Or our last option is that, that non-searchable PDFs, but will give you text files that contain the text uh, omitting any of the redactions as a separate document. So you could have abc001.pdf and then abc001.txt that contains the text. All of these, regardless of whether they're searchable, image-based, or OCR, will omit any data that was redacted. Then you browse to where you want to save those new files, and then choose your naming convention for those files. So do you want to use those new Bates numbers that we just created, or do you want to use their original file names? I'm going to put these right on my desktop, and I'm going to call this production. is. I click OK. And that's where it will go. It will not let you go past unless you choose a place that you want it to go. And then it gives you a summary of everything that you've chosen. I click Next. And it will verify and produce those documents. And I'll show you in just a second what that looks like. Click here to open the output folder. We'll take you directly to those. And there are my produced documents. So this one was omitted, so this is my placeholder. There's my document. And then here's my document with my redaction and the redaction reason printed on top of it. And there's my branded Bates number. So that's production in case map. 12. So those are the three options that we have added in Case Map 12 uh, that will be released next week. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, Lydia, did we receive any Hi. questions? Yes, we did, actually. Um, All right. I'll start with the first question we received, um, and that is, try to scroll back up to see it. Here we go. Okay. Um, what are some of the benefits of uh, LexisNexis Case Map Suite over a home-built system in Microsoft Access? A, a couple of things. Uh, one, if you're using Lexis for research, you can send your research directly to Case Map onto the uh, Research tab. 
You can also, from our Persons tab, you can run uh, judicial litigation profile reports on your judge or a judge analyzer report. You can run background checks on your, uh, on your people directly from here. Also, whether you are using Lexis or West for your research, as long as you have this citation number in that spreadsheet, we will shepherdize on the fly. And then, uh, additionally, we pull information. So um, we pull information from other review platforms. So if you're using concordance, if you're using relativity, if you're using any other uh, review platform, you can send information directly to CaseMap through plugins, and then these paper clips will go back to your review tool. So we create that kind of uh, link as well. Great. Um, so we have a few other questions. Um, in the case you would have documents that your client already produced, documents produced by other parties, and the client's documents that have not been produced to consider for production, um, how do you select only the latter group to consider for production? So what I would do in that situation is because case map is customizable, uh, I would create a new field and say, uh, or there's a source of a document, and these are, um, this is a drop-down field. So I would add uh, produced documents, produced from opposing counsel, received from client, and then just run a filter on those. Great. OK. Um, next question. Apologies. Um, when you base stamp in case map 12, will the base number stay on the document within case map, and will it remember the number that we last used as in case map 10? That's a good question. Um, so if I understand the first part of the question right, it will write those Bates numbers back to your Bates begin and Bates end. Whether it knows where it left off, uh, that one I don't know. Uh, so I will follow up on that. And when we send out the, uh, the information to everyone, I will get that question answered and include that in the information. Great, great. OK, and then the uh, next question is, what file type can be added into case map? Is it image only, you know, PDF, JPEG, et cetera? Anything. Uh, we the only things that we can't we can't OCR uh, WAV files and video files and zip files or archive files, but when you bring them in, we'll still make a reference to it, and you can always in the Doc Manager open them up in their native application. Otherwise, you can open up anything. Okay, great, um, and this. Next question is, will, it, will, will uh, case map track documents produced? Not at this time. This first iteration, no. So we recommend you create a checkbox. And then when you run that production, then you just check the box for all those that are, are produced. Uh, this is a rolling release. So this is the first iterance of this. And we do have more features coming. OK, great. Um, the next question was, um, the person who's asking the question has found linking documents rather than importing them to be cumbersome because they sometimes get moved. Has that changed? And can you have a choice to allow either link or import? No, everything gets imported now. OK, great. Um, OK, well, I think you already answered from Unless it comes from another platform, if you send it from concordance or relativity or something like that, then it's a link. And then you would have to update the link if it gets moved. But if you import the documents, uh, then uh, we do import them. OK. Uh, next question, are we able to send research from Lexis Advance uh, in case 12? I feel like you already answered that question. 
Yes, and that came in case map 11, so absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Um, when you bait stamp documents for production, does it automatically populate the base field? Sure does. Okay. And the next question, and will it put the base number for each doc back in the spreadsheet without the page number uh, column being filled in? Yes, as you can see, these were the product. This is the production I just did, and you'll see there's my ABC and my seven or eight zeros, however many I chose. So yes. Okay. Um, one person asked, "Can Case Map review metadata?" Um, yeah, there's a uh, this person in particular is, uh, has a big case. They're requesting metadata from documents and access records. And they want to know if they could use case map to organize and review those files. I'm not sure I understand the question, um, but I'll answer it as best I can. You can, by review, or is it that you have the metadata and you want to import it? So everything that's on the document itself, the text becomes searchable when you import it. So we can't search the metadata unless it's in the field. To get it in the fields, you can either manual code it, code it in that doc detail that I showed earlier, or we do have the option to import um, delimited files. So if they have a load file, you can import a load file and populate those metadata fields on the spreadsheet. I hope that answers the question. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, next question. Um, will the base number be on the actual document within case map? Once it's produced, yes. Okay. Um, and this is the next question. This is uh, probably the final. But can Case Map manage the relationship for a person who may be linked to a number of different organizations? And if so, how? So when you have uh, each value in case map is given what's called a short name. And this short name is how you link things. So if I have an organization, I can link those organizations to a person by using, see here, Converse Chemical Labs, where Philip Hawkins worked. This person, Philip Hawkins, is now linked to this organization. So wherever you use the short name in any field that has this icon here, you create a link. So there's no limit to how often you create, can create links. And you can create your own fields with this icon to create unique links that are meaningful for you and your workflow and your review. OK. Um, a couple more questions, and then I think we're going to wrap up. Um, are the base stamp uh, produced documents a duplicate of the original document, or is the original document renamed with the base number? No, it is a duplicate. We never changed the original. OK. Um, will the original document be base stamped or only the newly saved file that is produced and has been saved in a new folder? I think that's probably the same, very similar, right? Yes, and it's the same answer. We only change the new one. Right, OK. Um, if someone has a case already in progress and wants to begin using case map, can they import the documents to case map with base numbers on them already? Of course. Yeah, that's no problem at all. OK. Um, that's, that's actually it for our questions. Um, so I just have a quick reminder. Um, there's a brief survey at the end of our webinar today uh, that we ask you to please take a moment to complete, because your feedback is very helpful in helping us plan future webinars. Um, I want to thank Jennifer for her time today. Um, and I want to thank everyone who joined us today, and I hope you have a great week.